Hello and welcome back to another coffee tasting video. Before we get started, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you're alerted anytime I drop a new video, which is every Tuesday. I am happy to say that uh, I have a couple of Patreon supporters. Um, one was actually started all the way back in December. I thank that person. I thank the new person. Um, every little bit helps. It really does. And I thank you for your support. It, it does mean a lot. And I, I'm going to come up with something that is meaningful to the Patreon people. Um, I haven't decided what that is right now. It's just a, a heartfelt thank you for contributing to keep the channel going and, and showing your gratitude that way. So I thank you. With uh, that said, uh, I'm going to let you know when it starts, but I'm going to do a giveaway and it's going to be monthly. So it'll be like a rolling monthly giveaway. It's going to be for the United States only. Um, I apologize. Once I'm, once I'm sure of what my costs are going to be, no matter what, I definitely want to expand it. I definitely want to make sure that I can include all my all my people that are on this channel from the UK to Argentina to Australia, Canada, Mexico, Brazil. I mean, I'm sorry if I left you out, but you're all over the place and and it's just it's wonderful, it's inspiring. It makes this all worth it. And I want to be able to reward and create this, this for all of you. Going forward, the new contest that's going to run monthly, I will let you know when it starts. Uh, what it's going to be is basically at some point in the video, somewhere, something will change. It's going to be like a hide and seek thing. We might do something as simple as this. Did you catch it? Did you see what changed? The metal coffee sign side. It's going to be something that simple. It might show up for five seconds. It might show up for 10 seconds. It might be close to the beginning of the video. It might be in the middle of the video. It might be at the end of the video. It could be the first video of the month. It might be the fourth video of the month. You'll never know. Here's how it will work. Whatever video it's in, Whoever posts first with the correct observation of what changed, not meaning that I picked up a cup and I moved pods around. It's not going to be something like that. It's going to be something that changes in the background that doesn't normally change, something that you normally wouldn't touch. Something will be different. Maybe at Easter, there'll be an Easter egg sitting somewhere and then it disappears. Whoever responds first with the correct answer in the video that the change happened, they are automatically the winner. That is how this is going to work. It's going to happen each month. I'll let you know when we're going to start. I'm still working on the ideas for how we're going to play this out exactly. So be looking for that in the future. Ah, without further ado, we have another new release from Nespresso. Ne Nepali? Nepali? I don't Nepali? I don't know how you say it. But there you go. It's uh, Nepali. Uh, it is for the original line. This one, I am insanely excited. For the first time almost since they... Actually, I think it's the first time ever they have exceeded their level 11 and hit with a coffee at level 13. So let's take a look at what they have to say. But it's called Exceptionally Dark and Creamy, Roastiness, Level 5, Bitterness, Level 5, Body, Level 5, but Acidity, Level 1. That is incredibly interesting. It is going to be very interesting to taste. How are they getting the body, bitterness, and roasting all the way at level five and yet keeping that acid that 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 tart acid that comes through so much 
when you get a dark blend. The most intense and dark roast in this range, inspired by the capital of coffee, reveals the deep-rooted roasting traditions of Naples. So, its depth of character should come as no surprise. The aromatic profile, a velvety, creamy cup with an extremely thick body and pleasantly bitter cocoa notes. Let's take a look at what these look, pods look like. Oh, these are pretty. Wow. These are pretty. All in pretty good shape. That is a really pretty. It is a bright red. Kind of a dark, I don't even know what you'd call, I don't know, almost like a swirl running through it of black tagged on the front, got, probably not gonna show up on camera with the name. We got Roastiness 5, Body 5, Bitterness 5, Intensity Level 13. This one can be done as a Ristorito or an Espresso. We will try it both ways. Let's go brew a shot. Nepali for the original line, round one. Let's get that in. I'm gonna do the espresso one first. All right, let's take a look. It's got quite the aroma for, wow. When it was brewing, you really got the aroma coming off of it, but surprisingly, it doesn't have that much of a smell right out of the cup. Yeah, just a, it's got kind of a, just a, a, I guess, if you will, a standard espresso smell. So let's go give it a taste. Nepali for the original line. Oh man. It, it's very, mm, it's very strong, but I think they did actually accomplish it. I don't think it's got acid in it. That is really, it really hits. Like, I don't know if I'm tasting, let me see. This is gonna be a good one. Wow. I almost like the aftertaste more than I like the initial taste. The initial taste, I am not getting the cocoa notes. They said here, velvety creamy cup with an extremely thick body and pleasantly bitter cocoa notes. It is extremely thick. I'm not gonna lie, this is, and this is the espresso shot. I'm almost scared what it's gonna do when we get to the Ristorito. That is so good. I'm gonna, let me. They say extremely thick, yes. This is not watery, it's got a very pleasant taste. This is really good. I'm thinking this might be a great contender to do the black and white with. It's got some bitter in it. It's extremely thick. It's gonna play out really well in the chocolate and the uh, heavy whip. This is, this is really good. This is really, really good. Yeah, I'm, that is really thick. They say extremely thick. That is, that's an understatement. It's got a very, very, very thick taste to it. I think, uh, Boy, I think we need to do the Ristorito. Let's go round two. Let's go brew another shot. Nepali in the Ristorito setting. Round two. We'll get this dialed down. This is going to drop us down to a 0.85 pour from that already thick one at 1.35. So let's get this going. Oh, 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 oh boy, that changed the smell a lot. Oh man, that almost, wow, that almost fumes into your eyes. 
<laughs> oh, this is gonna be scary. <laughs> Let's go give this a taste. Whew. Okay, <laughs> this one almost, wow, it kind of almost hurts my eyes when I bring it up. Here we go. <laughs> Nepali in the Ristorito pour. Oh my goodness. That's very different. Holy cow. Woo! That is insanely strong. Wow. Holy cow. I don't even know if I tasted anything. I was more overwhelmed by... I gotta, I gotta get some water. Whew. All right, I rinsed out my mouth a little bit. Try this one more time. I'm gonna go even lighter with a taste here. Oh man, that's strong. Whew. Oh, I think if, wow. Bleh. Wow. It's very strong. If <laughs> it's got before taste, after taste, in the middle taste, two seconds later taste, it, it's, it coats. It's very thick. This made it even more thick. Uh, whew, man, if you were gonna put this into, now that's an idea. I'm kind of wondering, this I think might play out really, w man, the aftertaste is incredible. It really, I think I think espresso shot is probably where you want to stay. This one, man, it gets overwhelming quick. It's got quite a bit of, it, it's still not acidic. It's just very all over your mouth. It lingers. It It's a lot of bitter. And for me, it's almost too much. And I like it. I like bitter. And it's, but it's not a, it's not like a harsh bitter. Like you've heard me describe some of them where it's like bitter and you're like, it just doesn't taste good. It, it does taste good. It's just overwhelming. It, it, it's a palate overload. This was borderline. That's why I said I'm almost scared to do this one. This was borderline too much. It was right at the limit of what I wanted to, to drink. This one, man, you better be ready because it is going to hit your palate like a ton of bricks. I think... This is gonna stand up extremely well in milk. Let's do an espresso shot. Let's do two ounces of milk. Make it kind of a little bit like a cappuccino. Let's go round three. Let's go brew another cup. Nepali, we're gonna do the cappuccino setting on this. All right, let's get our pod going. I'm gonna pour in right at two ounces of milk. Some of you have requested to make sure I always tell you kind of how much I'm using. And I thought that's actually a great idea. We'll let that drip. Put the wand in. The milk just finished. We're gonna clean that out. That one on the cappuccino setting with nothing changed on it, froths the milk to about 188 degrees. Some of you ask about this one maxes out, I believe, at about 165. This one maxes out at about 188. Um, this one gets substantially hotter, and that's their what they consider their ideal setting. They also have, I believe, four levels above that, so it can get your milk substantially hotter. Let's pour that milk in. Got a little bit of the foam. Let's go give it a taste. Gonna give it a little stir. All right, Nepali with an espresso shot. Two ounces of milk. Let's give this a taste. Yeah, that holds up real well in milk. Holds up real well in milk. I'm not a, a huge milk fan for uh, a lot of the coffees. I don't use it that much. But this one holds up really, really well. Taste is spot on with milk. Yeah, that's, that's good. 
That is really, really good. I think you might almost be able to... Let me try something real quick. Let's stick in just a little bit of chocolate. And when I mean a little bit, I'm thinking like about a half a pump. Very, very little. Give it a quick mix. Just because there is a little bit of a cocoa note, just a little bit coming through. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Man, just, ooh, just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of chocolate added to the milk. It just enhances the what's already there for the pod. That is extremely good. It, that just makes it, that takes it from yes, home run to knocked it out of the park. This is, oh, that's extremely good. Whew, man, let's take a look at what they're doing here. This is an Espresso Exclusives. I'm probably going to mess this up, but it's Inspirazoni, Zani, Italiano, Italiana. Um, this pod is 70 cents. Absolutely, go out and grab this. This, hmm. This one's going to be, uh, I hope they're keeping it. I hope they're keeping it. Because this one is a home run for the new, dark, rich, oh, it's so thick. It's so thick. If you're using it in, like, like what we did here with milk or you're blending it down into something else, this one is going to be outstanding as a dark, roast, thick, uh, espresso absolutely wonderful whoo what a great what a great way to come back I was excited about picking these up it turned out this is a wonderful addition I'm excited for the next one now it's a level eight I believe but still if, if this is any indication of the direction we're going excellent now before we wrap this video up, I want to follow up on a couple of previous videos. They released all these, the six videos that hit just prior. Uh, it was all the Barista Creations line. Those are all going to be permanent lines. They're replacing the coffees as some of you commented. They have replaced the base on almost all of these. And also he said that the flavors on all of them except are uh, the flavors on all of them are authentic flavors with the exception of the hazelnut. He said that is a sim uh, a simulated flavor because of nut allergies. He did say that the base was changed on almost all of them to a Colombian Ethiopian. And I apologize. I thought I was going to remember what he told me the old base was made from, but it wasn't either one of those two. When we reviewed it and we noticed the change the flavors had changed they have reworked it they've changed the base that's why everything kind of went sideways that's why a lot of this did not play out like their old flavors these are replacing them 100 percent for the ones that they nailed it's it's great for the ones that they didn't i'm i'm hoping maybe they work it just a little bit as time goes to make it more palatable either for the American market or for the world market. I don't know. I've gotten feedback from all sorts of people and everybody seems to kind of be on board with what I did. I said on a lot of these. So I, I don't know. I don't know. The Barista Creations was kind of, as you saw, a hit and miss. They are a complete rework. A lot of you keyed in on that and that was 100% correct. They were reworks, but they've changed that base and that base is what is so important when you're building a coffee. It's just like a house. If you don't have a proper base, you don't have a proper foundation, you can't build a proper house. If you don't have a proper base or a proper foundation of a coffee, you can't build the coffee off of it. No matter how great your flavor is, if the base is broke, there's no point in continuing. I thank you once again for your time. Make sure that you do like, subscribe, and please hit that like button. The like button is so, so, so important 
uh, for YouTube. I had actually no idea how important the like button was for YouTube's algorithms. That is how they promote you. It's not comments. It's not how well you tag things. Well, it is sort of how you tag things, but it's actually how much you guys like stuff. So you are the ones that are making the difference. You are the ones that when you like the video, it gets shoved up the YouTube uh, a logarithm channel. So it, the fact that I'm getting found by more and more people, 100% you guys. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It is wonderful to be back. Thank you for those that gave us well wishes on vacation. Join us over on Patreon as several other people already have and donate to the channel that way. It's patreon.com forward slash IPON70. If you'd like to make a one-time donation as one person indicated, the only way Patreon allows it is you just have to subscribe to it, let them do one billing, and then you can unsubscribe as a Patreon. They don't actually have like a one-time donation thing. I apologize for that. I'll try and find a different solution for those of you that do just want to do a, a one-time thing. But for now, that's all I got. We will see you next week with another coffee tasting video. Until then, have a great rest of your day.